<laughs> I show love talking with my best sidekick of all time. Yeah, right. It's nothing better than a fan base. Yeah. Give me you a nickname. Oh, what we got here? The heckler, I knew that. <laughs> Fellas, should be a fun show for our Commanders mm -hmm. family. We have Sean Springs and Fred Smoot talking DBs. We have Fred giving out some new nicknames to some lucky players. And of course, we gotta dive in to the late rounds of the NFL Draft. We're just two weeks away. Fellas, all that and more starts right now. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome Commanders family to Command Center, presented by Seeky, the official primary ticketing partner of the Washington Commanders. Get that competition going, try to simulate uh, as we go along in this off-season process of how the games are going. Have a competitive environment. I think that brings out the best in one another. Bounce back, yeah, I do that often. Pro with it, yeah, I do that sauce. Good exotics when I do that coffee. Good deposits, I don't do that talking. This is legendary. The world I know and carry. Now I can live legendary. So where my respect? Where my respect? Commanders family. I am Brian Coleman Jr. This is Santana Moss, Fred Smoot, Logan Paulson, and fellas, we are just two weeks away two weeks. from the NFL draft. And when you're this close to the NFL draft, yeah. things are constantly <laughs> changing. So last week, we talked about second round picks, third round picks. Yeah. Has anything changed for you? Slightly has changed for me because yeah. I'm like, you know what? If you're sitting at two and you get the quarterback you want, not mm -hmm. the quarterback that's available, mm -hmm. wouldn't you want to pair him up with a top tier tackle? Mm -hmm. And if you wait to what, 36, maybe he's there, maybe he's not. Mm -hmm. So how about we take those two second round picks, package them, move up in the first to maybe pick 19, pick 20, and get the, the tackle you want. Mm -hmm. And now these guys get to age for a decade together. And I know you might not like that, but I like to take chances if I got the, uh, the tools to do them. Yeah, I mean, I think if you like the, if you like the guy there at yeah. 20, right, then yeah. you should move up. you got a Marius Mims, your Tyler Guyton's kind yeah. of in that range. The problem is, I don't know, it's going to take a lot to move up, and it's two players worth one player. Like, yeah. you have the King Lee Sumasai, the Chris Pauls there at the top of the second round. Yeah. Maybe you feel good sitting there and adding, like, an edge rusher or somebody yeah. like that, another player. Playmaker. So that's where it gets patch, pack, packaging pick gets, gets a little tough. But I yep. do like the idea of saying if you love Somebody, one of those other yes, guys, yes. he's there, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you think he's going to be a difference maker because it's hard. You're looking for something very specific in that left tackle you, spot. You're, you're looking, looking for a starter. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. I'm on the fence. I mm. love the idea. Though. I yeah. love the whole idea about moving up if you have a, that opportunity. But I don't know about giving away both of those. Yeah. Picks. Yeah. I, just, yeah. I feel like one of them is worth it. Yeah. Not both of them. And then the reason why I say that because yes, we need to tackle. Yeah. Yes, I want to go get that. You know that 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 leader that's going to be able to come in here and play now. We need somebody that's going to be able to play now. But I also think that when you have guys that might come available yeah. in the Xavier yeah. Leggins yeah. and those guys, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. if good he's football. around, good football players. It's going to be hard oh, to pass yeah. that guy. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah, I want to tackle. Yeah, I might consider going up. Yeah. But man, I would stay put at least with one of those picks. Yeah. I mean, I can't really imagine a better time for NFL fans, especially Commander fans. Yeah. We killed it yeah. in free agency. Yeah. So let's look at those position groups a little bit. What are you most likely or most excited to see develop Position-wise, Logan, you. Well, for me, I'm going to kind of cheat like I do in this kind of game yeah, all the time. You are, I think quarterback <laughs> is the position I'm most excited to see develop. Right? Yeah. You know, obviously, they did a great job in free agency of bringing in some veteran guys that can hold down the position. But, I mean, quarterback's the most important position in football. We have the second overall pick. There's yeah. three guys there that are excellent football players. Mm -hmm. I want to see what they do there and then how they kind of build that room out, how they've kind of built this ecosystem around that young player because I think they've done a good job, again, mm -hmm. bringing in some older guys that can support his development. So that's the one I'm most excited to see. Mm -hmm. Well, I got to piggyback off of that and say he's talking about the quarterback. So what other group that's going to protect him? And that's the offensive line. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I love the pickups. Alligator. Or, or we also be out yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. we have guys that's coming back in Cosme. You know, we have Wiley and those guys coming yeah. back. A, a lot of guys are still here, but we're going to need to pick guys. Yeah. And we got to also see this core develop. So I want to see these guys not only 
bring in some of the guys that's going to help us, you know, be where we need to be at that position group. Mm -hmm. But these guys got to get on board quick. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whoever's coaching these guys, they yeah. got to be ready they, they to, get, go they gotta be ready to go. It's going to be vital yes. that they protect that quarterback, you know, for us to have the kind of season that we want. And mm -hmm. also, they're getting all those guys together. They're, they're all new, right? Yeah. You think yeah. about it, they're all new. You're going to have a new left tackle, probably. Yeah. going to have new guard, new center. And you just got to get that gel, that chemistry going. And it's so important at that position specifically. Yeah. So yeah. getting those guys together can get it's that critical. done. Huge deal. Yeah. I'm going to go defensive backs. Of course. Like, if, you look, <laughs> if you look at the sheer numbers, yeah. if you put the safeties in the corners, we, we have the biggest group beside the offensive line. Yeah. So at the end of the day, that group has to be solid. And not mm -hmm. only solid, when you got a coach like Coach Witt in here, he's going he gonna to hold the bar very high. Yeah, so wait. now I think him teaching these guys and the older guys being able to teach the younger guys what's needed from them, I think that's the group they're going to have to really show up and show out. And Fred is always, you are always yeah. a step ahead. You mentioned yeah. Joe Witt Jr. Yeah. Our new defensive coordinator. Let's take a look more at his resume and see what this young secondary is getting with our new DC. Guys, our new defensive coordinator has a long list of success in the NFL. During his stint in Dallas, Witt Jr. led a Cowboys secondary that ranked atop the league in interceptions for two out of three years. Trevon Diggs and Deron Bland had themselves seasons under Joe Witt Jr. And he was a secondary and defensive passing game coordinator for the Falcons in 2020. And a highlight, he coached some of the best secondaries the Green Bay Packers have ever seen. Remember the year Charles Woodson won Defensive Player of the Year back in 2009? Well, that that was under Joe Witt Jr. And only one cornerback has done that since. Shout out to Joe Witt Jr. and this super impressive resume. And speaking of secondaries with impressive resumes, let's turn it over to my guy Fred Smoot and his good friend, Sean Springs. Welcome to this segment of Command Center. And I got my friend here, Sean Springs. And we're going to talk about this new coaching staff yep. and what connection is going to have to the defensive backfield and taking them to a next level. What do you think about this coaching staff first? And what do you think about the defensive backs we do have right now on well, the roster? Well, first of all, just having Coach Quinn, who's a defensive-minded coach. Yes. You know, I remember him when he's D coordinator in Seattle when yeah. he did with the Legion of Boom, Boom. and those yeah. guys out there. And then I, I know how the Atlanta Falcons changed. And then most recently, him at Dallas. Yes. The opportunistic. We talked about it all the time, Smoot, just the ability to get the ball. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand one or two turnovers can be the difference in the, in the game. In the game. Yeah. So when I think about Coach Quinn and now bringing Joe Witt, who was running that secondary, you, you know, Joe – is one of those guys that he get all the defense playing on the same page. He get all the guys just, just, just playing together. Even the backups. I think the thing that was interesting to me last year when Dallas had Trevion well, Diggs yep. go down, yep. Yep. Bland stepped right up, and we talked and about that. And almost won defensive player of the year. Right. So yep. we talked about that. So that's something that's contagious that's coming from the coaching. Yeah. That that I think we'll bring here to Washington. And he shows a history with defensive back. Don't forget. He sent Charles Woodson single-handedly yep. to the yellow jacket. Yep. All right? When he was in Green Bay, 157 interceptions. Went to Dallas for three years, 58 interceptions yep. there in Dallas. Manufacturing interceptions. Out of all the guys we still have on this roster, who do you think going to have the biggest glow up when it comes to defensive backfield and defensive backs when it comes to coach? Well, you got to think about Forbes. You yep. know, you're talking about a kid coming out of the SEC, which yep. you know playing at Mississippi State. You don't lead the SEC yeah. and not be productive be, in the NFL because yeah, he was yeah. going against the Pickens, who's at Pittsburgh, and yeah. he's going against some of the top uh, guys. When Jamar he's Chase, college, all Jamar Chase, yeah. you know, Jefferson, and those yeah. guys when yeah. they were at LSU. You would think that production and that type of coaching would translate Z for him and help him. Easily. And, and all the fans was hard on, well, he didn't produce last year and everything. Guys, he yeah. was a rookie. Yeah. He needed to be coached, coached up. up. Yeah. And now Coach Witt and Coach Quinn going to install that confidence as needed to be the defensive back, back. we think he can be. Yeah. Not only him, when you're like, when I look at this defense, you got yep. guys like St. Jude's, you yep. got Quan Martin, mm. you got some guys on the back end that can really, yep. and what I do like about Quan is, yep. he's a jack of all trades. You yep. can put him at corner, you can put him at safety. Mm -hmm. How do you think they'll utilize a guy like him when it comes to this defense? Well, the NFL is all about versatility. Yeah. When you think about Quan and coming out of Illinois, it's like he, that secondary, all those guys play well in the NFL. Now Quan is coming into his own, I believe, this year. Yeah. He's physical at that point in time. He is. He has range. He can get sideline to sideline, get off the hash if need to. And guess what? He just got natural instincts that sometimes you can't. And not teach. Teach. Yeah. And I think when Joe Witt gets those guys with those type of instincts, yeah. then that's when the production level goes up. See, I love talking defensive backs, and I sure love talking with my best side kick of all time. Yeah, right. Back to you, BH. 
Witt Jr., the defensive back whisperer, clearly has a history of developing defensive backs throughout his time in the league and since his draft month. Let's look at some of the young defensive backs drafted to Commanders in the last three seasons. You see Witt is inheriting some quality talent. We spent a first and a second rounder last year to bring in Emmanuel Forbes Jr. and Quan Martin. And in 2022, a fourth rounder on Percy Butler. And of course, Derek Forrest, who we're happy to see come back. Fellas, you see the secondary that Joe Witt Jr. is going to get to work with. We got to imagine someone's going to get added. What do you think Joe Witt's impact will be on our secondary room? Um, I heard Bart Scott say this one day, and he said, can't wait. <laughs> I just can't wait to see what he does with this group because I think it's something that I've talked about, uh, I guess, the last three years. I want to see these guys more physical. Yeah. Joe Witt sat down with us and told us he want guys that chose violence when they wake up in the morning. <laughs> so I want to see these guys get out there with him. Yeah, I think in addition to the violence, the physical meant style of play, which I th I'm 100% on board with, I think the tells he's going to give these guys, kind of the little tricks of the trade, this formation, they run this concept, this alignment, they run this. And if you can get the guys playing confident and know how to act on the information, they're going to be way more productive. So I can't wait to see that impact. Just a more physical, more dynamic secondary, and I think it's gonna, all going to start with coaching. And fellas, we just looked at the draft picks at his disposal. However, we did bring in some guys in free agency, and one in Jeremy Chin, safety. I actually got a chance to sit down with him on free agency Fridays. And let me tell you, this brother is intense. Let's talk about Joe Witt Jr. He's been a part of some of the better secondaries in the NFL. A lot of turnovers being forced when you play under Joe Witt Jr. What about him makes you excited to be under him? Uh, really, I, I actually just met him and, and sat down and really talked to him. Um, but like we, we talked on the phone yesterday and um, no, nah, it, it, it's been great. Just some of the things, some of the plans that he has. Uh, it's just super exciting to think about. Yeah, man, and we sit here, man, you're very calm and you're very poised, but on that field, something switches. Yeah. You get that aggression and you get that fire in you. Where does that come from? Man, I, I've had that my whole life. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I mean, ever since I started playing this game, man, it's just a, a fire lights. I, I, don't, I don't know where it comes from, but it's there. Well, we're glad you're going to have that fire on our side and be part of the Washington Commanders. You can check out that full interview on the Commanders YouTube page where we'll be uploading free agency Friday interviews every Friday that we have them. Now, your favorite duo, Fred and Santana, have a special edition of Just Chill for you this week. Fellas, y'all take it away. It's time for Just Chill, brought to you by Steam Fitters. Just Chill. <laughs> Steam Fitters. UA Local 602 provides the highest HVAC and mechanical piping services. Welcome back to another edition of Just Chill. Got my partner in crime, Fred Smoot. Now, Fred, yeah. one of your best skill sets when we was playing together in the yeah. locker room, I used to sit there and I'm talking about some niggas, I walked out of here with tears in my eyes, <laughs> yeah. crying. One of your best attributes was uh, nickname. Yeah, yeah most you definitely. found how to give every guy in the locker room yeah. or just anybody that you came across a nickname. Yeah. So, before we get to it, yeah. let's see if we can help out our, you know, new commander, yeah. Cleveland Fair. Most definitely. The hardest thing is learning everybody's name. People don't understand. People don't really know how many people work with an NFL team. For sure. They don't really know. And you be, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, God dang, like, I really like this person. I just can't remember. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> don't get me wrong. Like, I'm an employee. So in a on a micro scale, like, it's super cool. But it just takes time. Like, I'm just really like, OK, let me just get into the swing. See, <laughs> <laughs> so he feel like me because I know. Yeah. I ain't know a lot of you guys' names, yeah. but what was it about you and picking yeah. guys' names or just yeah. finding nicknames for yeah. guys? No, I just, I want to know everybody on the team. I want mm -hmm. to know everybody in the building. And sometimes it was easier to endure yourself to people by giving them nicknames. Because mm -hmm. you remember uh, Lorenzo Alexander. Yeah. I gave him the name One Man Game. Because, you know, we were winning <laughs> yeah. the game. He played tight end, Everything. offensive tackle, D tackle, linebacker. I like, man, he a one man game. Yeah. We don't need the 10 of us. Let's just leave. So I think sometimes it comes from practice. Sometimes it comes from hanging out in the locker room. So different things bring out different names for different people. All right, Fred. Yeah. Let's give out some nicknames to our new free agents. All right, let's try. All right. Uh, Saint Nick All Goody. Huh? <laughs> That's what we're going to call him because he, he come bearing gifts. Yeah. All right, what you think about that one? I like it. I All like right, it. most like definitely. It. The heckler. All right, that's what I do. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he's going to tell that, I'll be like, man, you got to heckle those people, man. It's all good. So, look, tell me this. If, if, look, what? Look, Don't that sound like Gucci? I'm going to get some Luke Vu. Or a Louis Vuitton. Yeah, I just call him Luke Vu. You know what I'm saying? Now, when you call these guys these nicknames yeah. when you run across them? No, because they're young and bigger than us right now, Tan. I can't, I can't do it like I used to. Oh, I call him Robert the Gold Jacket, all right? Oh, my God. Because guess what? He's a gold jacket guy. You know Bobby and Robert, yeah. they go together right mm -hmm. there. So I mixed it in. The Swagner. 
Yeah. I mean, look, you still got it, man. You yeah, still, thank you, man. You still got that juice when it comes to finding names. But I bet you yeah. better not call one of them young boys them nicknames you got going yes. on, man. Not saying Nick all goody. Always got the nicknames. Let's take a look at our lucky numbers brought to you by Maryland Lottery Fast Play Games. Play fast, win fast today, but please play responsibly. While the majority of the commander's current draft stock is in the front half of the draft, there are a few key selections in the fifth and seventh rounds. The commanders hold two picks in the fifth round after the trade with Seattle where we sent Sam Howell, and then we don't have a sixth round pick. However, we do have a pick at 222 in the seventh round. Fellas, walk us through the mindset heading into these later rounds. All right, guys, we talked a lot about the second and third round picks, but as that graphic just showed, we got Two picks in the fifth round, a pick yeah. in the seventh round, and it is a little bit a different landscape there yeah. in the second yeah. half of the draft. Yeah. What is the philosophy for this team in the second? You know, if you're if you're the GM. Yeah. GM Fred Smoot. Yes. Right? Frederick. Frederick. Yeah. What is your what is your Frederick Smoot? Yeah. Yeah. What is your philosophy in the, with that with the two fifths of the seventh round pick? At the bottom of the draft, I'm I'm taking chances. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm going out there to get guys if they have a special uh, skill set. If they have, a, if they can add to the special teams, mm -hmm. and I actually like to get guys that actually have dual positional worth. Oh, interesting. Like guys that maybe played on both sides of the ball, and we don't really truly know their position. I know they'll be a great special team fit, but then they can add depth in two or three positions. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to reach right there. I'm yeah. not trying to be safe yeah. in the fifth and the seventh round. I'm yeah. just not. I think you have an opportunity to really, you know, I guess you can say pad certain areas, certain groups, certain mm -hmm. cores on your team. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna go after guys that I say that you know when it comes to the skill set they're phenomenal ball players but some 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 odd way they felt this low yeah, and yeah. guess what i can still go out there and get a productive player like when we was coming out of the draft yeah. when you got picked late Mm -hmm. It was no chance for you. Though. Yeah. You was basically a body on the team. Yeah. Now you're seeing more and more mm -hmm. guys picked up you know, in, in these later rounds that are they're having longer careers because they can still play just where they fell. Yep. Yeah, for me, I look for traits, right? I yeah. want guys that physically can play the position. Like, mm -hmm. I look at Miles Cole from Texas. That's not like a great football player. Yeah. He's got 36-inch arm. He's mm -hmm. 280. He ran a 4-6 at the combine. Yeah. Like, that's a guy that I want to bet on. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Ethan Driscoll from Marshall, right? He's 6'9". Yeah. He's got long arms. He's not ready now, but yeah. maybe, you know, we put him on a red Project. shirt year, mm -hmm. figures it out. Yeah. Fred, is there anybody like that for you that you say, man, I really like these guys that maybe, maybe fill a need for the commanders? Now, you know, I don't really like hurricanes. <laughs> but if you go to... <laughs> Why not, man? Hey, hey, you, what are your hey, favorite guys? We got right one here. on our team. Hey. But James Williams. Safety. The safety, yeah. yeah. But guess what? Safety slash linebacker. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people worked him out at long back. I mean, linebacker, 6'4", 220 pounds, can run. He reminds me a lot of Curse from uh, the Cowboys. A guy that can yeah. play in the box, a safety that you can really move around but can actually fill in as a linebacker, and also a guy like Real Shipley. I think Real Shipley, Shipley, like, I think he's one of those backs that – after the fourth round, a lot of teams going to have him on their board because mm. he has elite uh, speed, and mm. he's a guy that didn't – I don't think he capsided in college. I think he still can get a lot better. And we were talking about somebody in the production meeting, yeah. uh, Sone Vake, who plays yeah. running back I love and Sonny Vake. safety. Yes. So it's funny you had Will Shipley who plays running back yeah. and then James with Williams – or James Williams, excuse yeah. me, who yeah. plays safety. So yeah. kind of a guy that makes – what do you like about him? Well, the thing about uh, Vake is – I don't know what position he's better in. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's a better running back. And like you said, he did play some slot. Yeah. And then he moves to safety. So he's a guy that you ought to make know he's going to help us on team. And when I yeah. bring him in, you're right, football player. But when I bring him in, he he the fourth screen running back, fifth screen running yeah. back, third screen safety. He's a guy that eventually they hit the field by week 10 because yeah. we know how injuries are in the NFL. And Teddy, you got some guys too that yeah. you like for later on guys. Well, I told you I like to pass certain core groups. So you look at our running back room and you say, we shot it. You know, yeah. we have B Rob, we have Eckler, we have yeah. a guy who we brought in last year yeah. who can be, he can play, you know, play the role, play a huge, he was rolling our offense. But then you say, okay, Eckler, he's an older guy. So yeah. let me get a guy that's that that's similar to his body type and his style of play. Yeah. I would go after a guy in Oregon, uh, Bucky Irvin. Bucky yeah. Irvin has yeah. the same kind of skill set. He's mm -hmm. not fast. He's real cat quick. Yeah. Small guy. Get out and know how to break tackles. To me, that looks like Elkler. He's, yeah. he, he has the same kind of skill set. So I would go after a guy that's uber talented. You see his numbers. Yeah. Put up a thousand some odd yards, you know, just a year ago, yeah. but can play. And yeah. I'll bring a guy like that in because you never know what may happen with Elkler, whether this year or, you know, later yeah. on. A guy like that, or a tight end. Yeah. You know, a, a tight end guy who I had, A.J. Barner. Yeah. yeah. Bully A.J. Yeah. Barner. He's a guy, he's a project. Yeah. He's a big dude, but he thrives in both catching the ball and block. I love that, yeah. actually. You know, yeah. that's one of the number one things that I look for in the block. That's why I like you so much on yeah. our team. Yeah. You talk player. about you're not a star, but you yeah. was a stud. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that's what you were. So I want a guy that can be a contributor. And, you know, that, that position alone, man, we've been – 
We've been throwing stones, throwing rocks at it, trying to yeah, get yeah. it right. So Since Jordan it, Reed. It would always mm-hmm. be a, a great fit to bring another guy in, Coach. Because, you know, it's all about talent. You, mm-hmm. you want to make yeah. sure you get enough guys. And you have those picks in the late round, mm-hmm. take advantage of them. Yeah. yeah, all those guys have their warts, but they could be good football players yeah. in the right situation, right? Mm-hmm. So the draft doesn't end after that second, third round pick. we got a lot of other p- play picks to work out. Two fists and a seventh. And I think, is, is Brian out in the bubble hanging out? Is he? Let's toss it to him. Right, yeah. We represent DC culture, and we have something called Beat Your Feet, and they are a specific dance group on our team that embodies DC original dance culture itself. That's awesome, man. That's so fun. I've seen them beat their feet, too. I can't do it, but it looks really, really cool. Now, you're out on that field, right? Take us there, right? The fans are getting loud. The players are running now. What are those moments like for you all when you guys are out there getting everybody hyped up? Well, before that, there is so much preparation that goes into all of our performances. Honestly, the grind is my favorite part. Yeah. Once we get there on game day, interacting with the fans, we have a pregame performance. Yeah. From there, we line up. The players run out through the tunnel. That's probably one of my favorite parts as well. <laughs> we stand. There is a salute that happens, the national anthem. I love that part as well. I'm going to say that I love every part of game day because it's just so amazing. So then we have two performances that we do in the end zone. And then from there, we stand on the sidelines and we get to get up and close and personal with our fans. Yeah. Just cheer the game on. So y'all are busy on game day. We're busy. (laughs) We're busy, but it is just so much fun being able to interact with fans because that's the only time that we get to do it unless we're in the community. Mm. And and like she said, the grind, right? Well, I got to imagine it takes certain characteristics to be a part of the command force. What are those characteristics? 100% it is a grind, but it's so worth it. So we are a team that is made up of gymnasts, dancers, and Be Your Feet. And we rehearse two to three nights every single week. And we learn together and we grow together and we have the best job in the world. And you guys are actually adding to that family, right? Somebody like me, I don't know how to beat my feet, but somebody (laughs) like me could audition coming up soon, right? Tell the people that want to be involved how they can audition. All right, first things first, registration for audition closes April 12th. Definitely want to make sure you register. Mm-hmm. And after you register, auditions are going to be from the 13th to the 16th, which is a Saturday to a Tuesday. Yep, so there are different rounds throughout those days. So be prepared to show off your skills, whether you're a gymnast, a dancer, or be your feet. Also be prepared to learn some choreography and for a quick interview round as well. A few moments later. Oh, God. <laughs> I, mean, my bad, my bad. I was trying to get back from the bubble. Oh, fellas, fellas, I was just with Command Force. You know what I'm yeah. saying? They, they give me no trolley and nothing like that. But y'all see, I ran and I ain't as sweaty as Fred. <laughs> now, fellas, y'all see, we got the Command Force yeah. on the show. We yeah. had the marching band on the show before. Yeah. yeah. What is it like? These, these things that are in the arena that just rallies the fans around. Yeah. How important is that? And what is it like when you hear these fans rally behind you in that stadium? It's the connection. Yeah. I think one of the things that I've, I felt the most... Uh, when I played this game was just knowing that I just made that moment yeah. special for them. You yeah. know what I mean? That's when, when I see these fans now, they be yeah. like, they give you the names. It's nothing better than a fan base yeah. giving you a nickname. Yeah. And when I'm able to go out there and produce yeah. and do what I do best for the love of my guys on the field yeah. and the guys that's in those seats, yeah. you know, that, it's no better feeling. Well, I say this. I remember most when it comes to you doing it, mm-hmm. is you scoring touchdowns and holding up that 2-1. Mm-hmm. I know the fans remember that, but when Fred Smooth made an interception. <laughs> and, and, and I just put it out there and I get 90,000 <laughs> just erupting, <laughs> saying that one syllable name, and then you can just feel the ground starting mm-hmm. to shake under your feet. That can be very addictive. Yeah. That can be very addictive. So I want to hear my name over and over and over. So you got to make plays to do that. Sometimes yeah. I'm moving bad because yeah. they did call it. Yeah, don't, don't worry. <laughs> at, at the end of the day, if they was booing me, it sounded like schmoop. So it didn't really care. So I still dance and I still have my energy and my excitement. No, I mean, I think this uh, fan base is fantastic, right? Yeah. The support they've given. I mean, yeah. just think back to the 2012 season, Tana, yeah. and how, just, how much juice every game brought and just mm-hmm. how it was so exciting to be out there, how exciting the city was, mm-hmm. and everyone was so supportive. Great fan base here. And, and having those resources, the band, the, the dance team is yeah. just fantastic. Yeah, too. man, that's awesome. And Fred, you know, you all auditioned right. for the band. Can I be? We didn't this. have you audition for what command force. However, you said you was a break dancer. I Tana did. said you used to work at Chippendale. Yeah. I did. Show I us some believe. moves while we send off the show just for your command <laughs> <fans. laughs> Dad came with. He didn't want his little sweet potato to be here without him. 
but now he really wishes she was here without. Next time, he'll just let her roll with her new entourage, and he'll only trust SeatGeek with the tickets. Because when she finds her happy place, he can find his way back to the car. The ticketing app trusted by fans. SeatGeek, so fans can fan.